What is up, my kings and queens and all in between? It is Andrew Velasquez with another episode of Mindful Artist Podcast. Welcome back, you guys. Season two, going long and strong. I'm so excited to introduce our new guest to you. you if you're watching, you can probably see her beautiful face right now. Yes, the infamous, famous YouTuber. I can't wait to introduce you guys. But if you're listening, let me give you a little bit of some homework first before we go into that. I would love for you to go to our reviews, give us some stars, give us some ratings, share it with somebody that you love that you know it'll resonate with. That way, it's most likely to come out in their alg algorithms as well. And that song you just heard called Mi Corazón is uh, written by myself, produced by Aaron McLendon. You can download Mi Corazón wherever you stream your favorite music. And so for today, your one-stop shop place for all things mindfulness, creativity, while balancing entrepreneurship, I have an amazing guest, you guys. It is Mary Lou Mandel. Say hello, Mary Lou. Yeah. Hello, hello. All right, let me give you a bio, babe. So Mary Lou Mandel is a seasoned on-camera host, producer, and content creator with 15-plus years of experience. Her mission is to help create creators make better videos, patch her YouTube live streams covering video creation, tech tips, editing, on-camera confidence, and community connection. She also wants to remind you to drink some water, be good humans, and don't forget to wipe your lens. Fun facts, her cat's names are Gizmo and Zilla. She's been in Los Angeles since 2007, has worked for casting directors, talent agencies, production companies, cinema makeup school, which is where we met, and did time as a background actor, has been in a burlesque performer and host, did not know that, has competed in pageants, including Miss California USA. I can totally see that. And was a host for some Panda Express training videos that she's never seen. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Mary Lou. How are you? Thank, Thank you for having me here. on the show. I always love yes. chatting with you. And we always get deep. We get deep in the creativity and the the soul of uh, us really as do. artists, which I, I love. I love those conversations. We really do. We really do. This is exactly why I wanted to have you on here, because you're perfect in so many ways for Mindful Artist podcast mission statement. And you represent all those things that we're about. And that's community connection, inspiring. And uh, I really am grateful for what you've taught me because you kind of mentored me through our, our um, you know, friendship and our and our career kind of passed too, because our first meeting happened to happen during COVID. And then you oversaw a lot of the media department and did some great interviews. And I think I reached out for just some questions and you've always been so kind and helpful. And I just want to commend my gratitude and express how grateful I am for you to have really showed me the ways and you've taught me a lot. I am want to thank you so much from the bottom of mi corazón for always being yeah. that support. <laughs> yes. And you know you what the, the greatest the greatest thanks of that is that you actually make the show. Is that you yeah. actually make the podcast. You yeah. actually are here doing this. So like cuz a lot of people ask and then they don't ever do anything. So yeah. this yeah. this means everything to me to see that you're you're doing your show. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Yeah, no, it's you know, I'm that type of person that's like uh, I have a goal I'm going to pursue it. It's I'm not going to procrastinate. Yeah, I have little distractions like we all do, but I love a checklist. Uh, and the advice that you have uh, shared in the past has been really resourceful uh, with just online media innovation and presence and tech and all the things. So yeah, you guys, she is the person to look out for if you need a lesson, if you need uh, expertise and some of it is free too. I mean, you're getting a little, a lot of it free on her YouTube lives and her Instagram lives. Um, and we're going to dive deep into that. So before we do that, let's kind of rewind. Let's go a little flashback in past. How was baby Mary Lou? Where are you from? Where were you always this creative and into tech and um, wanting to like help others? Well, I can actually show you her. I have a picture yes. that I keep by my desk. <sighs> This Let was me. See me. Baby Mary Lou. Oh. This was in uh, 1996. You look the same. <laughs> That's what you everybody says same. when I share this. But Literally the same style. I love it. She like she wanted to like just know things. She Wait, just hold it up again. Because to... some of us are just listening. You guys, she's smiling yes. with the same beautiful smile. Her gorgeous glasses. Her beautiful bob. And she's just a good time. She's wearing, I think, like a, is that a, in your jammies? It's like a sweatpants. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. a sweatshirt, sweatpants, and then like the, a the couch looks Asian comfortable. decor. I'm here for it. Yes. Yes. And this, that was <laughs> like, here where I live now, right? <laughs> this was in Florida. So yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, not in Orlando, but in, in the panhandle. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I was a military kid. My mom is Filipino. My dad is American. He got stationed in the Philippines uh, through the Air Force, came back with a wife and a kid. And that was me. And here I am. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, through like my childhood, childhood, like elementary school up until middle school was like, I just was in so many schools. I went to like six different elementary schools, which most yeah. people are like, how is that possible? I was like, we moved more than once a year. Yeah. And, and I'm really grateful for that, though, because I am very used to and very comfortable being the new kid and i will you just throw me into it like i i try i think some this is something that's come up for me lately is i remember being told that i was shy mm. as a kid but mm -hmm. like when i think about it i was like i don't think i was i think the people who were telling me i was shy wanted me to be shy i wasn't mm. singing and dancing but sure. i was like comfortable enough to go talk to people yeah. And confident enough to to exist uh, with adults mm -hmm. and with other kids and think, you know, sure. like that, that never was a problem where I'm like, oh, I can't be here. I've always been like, you know, I, I belong here, too. Yeah. So I see you as an observer, especially when you're moving mm -hmm. from location to location, you're probably just figuring it out. So maybe mm -hmm. their perception of shyness was really your observations on your surroundings and learning where you're at and the different energies that are there now. Right. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm always like. Mm -hmm. looking out like what can I learn <laughs> what can I know and then yeah um and then and then absorb all of that so Absolutely. being a kid that moved around a lot and then in in middle school and high school that's where I ended up in Florida in the panhandle Panama City and I just like as soon as I had access to a camera I was making videos nice middle school i was uh you know like you can have like they were like you could have an art class or you can go volunteer in the library and i was like library please because then i can sit and look Smart. at books and yeah. you know just just be a nerd for yeah. an hour every day yeah. but in I the was library, a nerd too. it was it was like where they the av team was next to it uh like offshoot of the library where they shot the morning announcements and i remember seeing that and i was like can can I be part of this? And then I got to be the host of the morning announcements and the afternoon what? announcements. And I took it very seriously. Wow. So, you started. So I tell people age. like I've been hosting since, you know, like I took it very, 15. I was like, today we have pizza and there's a football game at two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can hear your very tone serious too. Business. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And so that's kind of like how you discovered your voice. I would say. Mm -hmm and hearing the reactions to your audience and seeing what works and what doesn't and then um all right fast forward to los angeles when did that happen and why so in uh so after panama city i went to orlando which is where you're at for college i started to take um i was a theater major but the kind of theater major that you don't get to take theater classes you don't get to take acting classes so that doesn't stop me. I went and took whatever kind of art classes I want around town, uh, but was, okay. you know, I, I did my majors. I took my classes, but then I also did classes that were not associated with the school. Just like every sure. town you're in, you can find the improv class. You can find an acting class. You can find. Absolutely. You know, you can find that stuff. Like it's mm -hmm. college isn't necessarily where you get that stuff. College is where you, you kind of make a, a bigger network and see other things in the world. Yes. Uh, in, in an artistic sense. Right. Yeah. But, from that doing in in Orlando, I got to work for a casting director and I was like enjoying that. And I was like, you know what? I want to be somewhere more more is th of this is happening mm -hmm. because kind of the height of the trajectory I was on in Florida was theme park stuff, which is wonderful. Yeah. I love theme mm -hmm. parks. Same. But I wanted, you know, I wanted to work on more TV and film, more productions. I wanted to be like in it, in it. So that's when I moved to Los Angeles in 2007 and By I, yourself? Came, I was ready i came with two friends okay and um unfortunately neither of the, neither of them i talked to anymore but that's all part good. of growing up is that people you know are part of your life for a chapter mm -hmm. and i wish them all well and they're mm -hmm. on their a new chapter for things and 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 that is okay because Absolutely. we all have paths yeah. we all sometimes have paths even family to follow yeah Mm -hmm. Totally. And that we talk about that before. Yes. <laughs> and um, so then coming to Los Angeles, I was ready to hit the ground running. I got an internship at a talent agency 
I was ready to start auditioning. I was like, just like so green and so fresh and thought mm. like you could just get into it. And then the writer's strike <laughs> happens. Yeah. And then there's nothing. Right. And there, there was just nothing, nothing. So, but that was okay. Like it, you know, because it's not like I was really working in the industry yet. Mm -hmm. I just had just got here. So, you know, I was working at Cheesecake Factory. I was a waitress. Mm -hmm. I was the intern at the talent All agency. All the hustles. And learned so much. And then that's just kind of been my journey here is when people are like, what do you do? For the longest time, it's been whatever I need to. Yeah. That's what I do. Whatever mm -hmm. I need to, because I love my life. I love my freedom. I love my hustle. I love experiencing, experiencing things. And every job, like I've had every job. And yeah. all of them have built this very dynamic capability that I have. They were like, you can throw anything at me and it's going to be fine. I'm going to be able to love that. figure out a way. I love that. No, that's that's part of the artist experience of expression and taking risks in departments or genres that you're not necessarily the most confident in, but just throwing yourself into be open minded and learn and embrace from your discoveries and challenges. Um, that's it's it's appropriate like that is necessary for the growth and mm -hmm. the evolution of expanding your portfolio and your resume and building that, um, you know, database of just networking and what depending on what you're going to do i think even where you're at maturity wise from your teens 20s 30s where, wherever you are in your age all of that's going to shape you throughout that journey as well because you you transform like you know the 10 year old mary lou brain was not the same as the 20 year old mary lou brain and where you're at i'm not going to give your age out but or, yeah. or do that but I'm saying is that you have to kind of like pivot and and I love that you were not scared. I love that you were just uh you know, you courageous and just took the risk to move from one coast to the other coast and just, you know, lost friends along the way but still kept going and always with a freaking yeah. smile on your face too since I've known you cuz I know um there were, you know, some challenges in like in any area in schools in general because they're systemic and they have um curriculum there even then you still had a smile on your face even through COVID you still had like a smile on your face. so I think that's the key is that your positive attitude your uh outgoing kind of personality which is not shy which I don't know why people were saying that back then um has really helped you know brand who you are and what you have to to offer as like a product because you're your own brand essentially mm -hmm. um so I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, my God. Um, as I was reading your bio, like, how did that feel to hear back your kind of accomplishments and a little bit of um, your portfolio? It's so interesting when you hear it said back, because, of course, like I'm having to put it together and writing a bio is, I think, always so hard if you're not used to doing that. So fortunately, like with AI tools, right? I was, I asked, I was like, ask me questions so you can write me a short bio. Oh my God, that's so smart. I didn't even and think of that. Like, okay. Yeah. And it was like, what this, this, you know, like it just asked some things. It gave me like a kind of like a template and it was like, tell me about what you have done, how much experience, what's your specialty, something fun, like something personal you know, things like that. And then it crafted something and then I, I've massaged it from there. But that's ever changing. And I'm really proud of where that is now because I can look back. I have like older copies of older bios that, you know, it's like that was me at that time, but like how much it's grown. And even from hearing that now, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I have mm -hmm. some things I need to even hone in a little bit more mm -hmm. yeah. because like I want to help video creators. But lately, lately the call is specifically, and I'll call out my age, I'm 41, I just turned 41. And I think you can start at any time, you can mm -hmm. shift at any time, you can merge, you can evolve, always, always, we, we have to, mm -hmm. we have to. And it is our responsibility at any age to take care of the the little one, right? Like what mm -hmm. who I have in my picture, that's why she's here next to me, because it's my job to make sure I take care of her. Yeah. At, 13, right? So I think yeah. I look at her and I'm like, girl, so much good is waiting for you. Because I'll say like, we go on a kind of little emotional route. Mm -hmm. with, when I look at her at 13, that is right before some really, really tragic things are hitting in my life. 
really, really tragic mm-hmm. things for like a period of like maybe 10 years. But I used to look at these pictures and like I would feel sad because I was like, oh, it's going to be so hard for you. This is what I could would see from her. I was like, it's just going to be so hard. But now in the chapter I'm in now in my 40s, like I definitely feel confidence. I feel like, OK, I know what I know and I know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I decided this year that I'm done with the I'm not sure what I'm doing. Let me still try to figure it out. It's like, no, I know what I'm doing. I can always learn more, right? You can Mm -hmm. always learn more. Of course, yes. I know what I need to know to operate. And in my being confident, it is exuding that and throwing out that confidence for other people to also shine. Because when you are confident, it is not taking away from somebody else. When you're confident, it is shining the light so they can also shine. Reach. So I'm just getting I decided, snaps, right? like, <laughs> yes. I was like, this is, this is how it is because like, I just need to showcase that. Cause I do remember as a kid thinking, I'm like, wow, that it must be so hard to be an adult. Cause like, nobody knows what's going on. And then I got to being adult and I was like, no, really nobody knows what's going on. Like yeah. really nobody does. So you just yeah. have to decide. I know what I know. I can confidently yeah. move forward with what I do know and then keep growing from there because there's so many things to really worry about like do we have to worry about the little like we went through a global pandemic in our lifetime as well as like all these other wild things and it's not going to stop Mm -hmm. so how can we in our day-to-day make our experience in life better walking through confidently does make the experience better i will tell you that down like hands down Mm -hmm. It makes it better for me. It makes it better for people who are around me. Not that it's always like that, like the storms come through, right? but you do what you can to, to mitigate that. You learn how to regulate your emotions and, and then it gets easier. It's a skill. It's something that you build upon. And with talking about the bio, I want to focus, I think a little bit more on people who are in their middle age right? Like who are like in your twenties and thirties, like, oh, you're still young, still fresh, right? Like you're not old, you know? And like middle-aged, right? It's like, it used to be like, oh, that's the end of life, right? The middle, yeah. the middle age, but it's like, yeah. no, it's like, I am experienced mm-hmm. and like, I don't have kids. I'm not tied to anything. Like we, I feel like the forties or the twenties. Like if I think about it's a rebirth it, for me, in my opinion, it, too. It really is. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's and, an and, opportunity and I've heard for evolution. So many of our like artist people, like if you are mm-hmm. thinking about it the right way, it is, it is the gift. It is not mm-hmm. the death trap. It is the gift. Period. Yeah. A couple of things that I want to uh, touch on is um, that I had in the back of my head. <laughs> as I, it blanks out right now, but Yes, a mindful artist podcast for me, they all represent and work hand in hand together. So being creative, being spiritual, being an entrepreneur, they're all the same thing, which is why I wanted to host a space for that reason for all of us to kind of share with each other and build this community. Um, And I think that you touched a lot of important things. The fact that you have a 13 year old picture of yourself, I speak on, you know, protecting that innocence and that youth is very important even at 41 i'm 42 still thinking about 10 year old little andrew and hugging him and making him proud and telling him he's going to be all right and we're doing this together um and yeah i think it's just important to not lose that innocence and keep that creative juice flow in keep that spirit that passion and also your positivity and you touched on being confident and how infectious that could be and yes, we're human. Yes, we're going to have some bad days. Allow yourself to to grieve that, to go through that. Um, I I can relate. And, you know, it's uh, I lost my mom and two pets in like a year. Mm. And was it difficult? Of course. But I knew because of the work that I've done and because of the self-development and books that I've read and the therapy that it was going to be temporary and everything is temporary. And so it's up to me. I'm the individual. I'm the director of my cinematic experience. So I'm going to make everything positive, period, confident going forward, because that darkness is always there and it can consume you, right? It can be seductive, but 
so can positivity. And if you focus on that and you see how your energy can literally shift a room or a conversation with somebody that you're having remotely, it doesn't matter. Like it will literally, it's, in, it's in, infectious. And so confidence, positivity, sharing that with each other is good in any capacity, whether it's business, networking, brainstorming, workshopping, just believe in yourself, you know, have those moments of doubt. Okay. Give it an expiration date. Then just move the fuck on. You got to move forward. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And that's like with your, like, I love the title of this podcast is like mindful artist, mm -hmm. because what we are putting out is energetically affecting other people. And yeah. I call it when people are like feeling insecure, they're feeling trash and they go out in the world and they just start hitting everybody with their emotional shrapnel. They're just because they're not mindful of what's going on around them. They're like, I'm having a bad day. So everyone around me is going to get hit with these little things of bad energy because yeah. I'm here and I cannot be bothered to be thinking about everyone else. But like I like to think about and kind of explain it as if it is your energy is viral, right? Totally. And if you have a flu, right? Stay home. If you're sneezing and coughing everywhere, stay home. Seek help if you need, right? Call the doctor, get some medicine, rest, all of that, right? Have a loved one make you soup. Same. You're feeling down. You're feeling dark. If you can, stay home. Take care of that. Like, it's a storm that's passing, but be mindful of that energy. But mm -hmm. when you're feeling real good, that's also infectious. Mm -hmm. You can take that out in the world and, and make things a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. Thank you, babe. All right. We're moving into my uh, how you going to love someone else if you can't love yourself for a section. And that is that's right. Mary Lou, can you share with us what is your self-care uh, self -care beauty regimen? Do you take time for yourself selfishly before you service others? And what are your beauty skincare secrets that you want to share? Girl, everything. Yes, I, I know, love that. it. Yes, I, I know. Love it. So we're both for... beauty like obsessions. So I know that you're going to share the, all the things. Go right? for it. That's why we're in our, our early 40s and stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. You have to drink brown your don't water. Brown don't brown, baby. Yes. Drink yes, your water. <laughs> Always. It's drinking Asian the water. Asian don't raise it. It is the key. Drinking your water and starting, starting taking care of your skin as early as you can. Like, fortunately, sunblock was built into me, you know, from a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and because like in the Philippines, like where my mom's family is from the Philippines, there is colorism there. So mm -hmm. there is, you know, a value on lighter skin, which I think is like an unfortunate dynamic. But because of that, sunblock was instilled into me. And which is so, the best anti-aging to start at such a young age. So that's good. Yeah. If you can just get that going. Great. Um, the take the vitamins, the biotin, the the collagen, the um yes, the I do all that. Yes. Greens, you yes. know, like yes, the skin greens, hair nails. The greens, mm -hmm. Yes, it all matters. And I love my skincare devices. I love like my microcurrent. I love the red light therapy. I love like all of those things. Uh and and I used to try a lot of different skincare skincare, but I've actually gotten to a point where I found what works and I don't mess with it, you know, because like you can experiment, 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 which I've done for years. Mm -hmm. But now uh, what I got, I started using Muesli, which is like a okay. prescription skincare. And uh, I started with the like spot, I had like some dark spots from sun damage right here. And it's like, it's taken care of it. And nice. Retin-A, tretinoin, tretinoin, mm. take your retinol or wear your retinol. During the evening, not during the day. Yes. Just in the evening, ease into it because it's going to make your skin angry at first, but it's worth it on the other side. Love. Thank you for sharing that. Super cool. I'm taking notes, so I have that. Uh, but yes. All right. Um, that's why you look so good. So it's, yeah, inside what you're intaking, what you're treating and nourishing your body, uh, the biotin, the collagen, and knowing some simple streamlining ingredients, not overdoing it with uh, complicated steps, uh, because then at that point you might trigger some things that act activate some things that are not needed or irritation or sensitivities. So I like that you're starting with the water, number one, doing your vitamins, your nutrients, and then your tools, which is part of your tech obsession. <laughs> Love that. Yes. 
walk us through a little bit of these tools. Like what's your favorite tool and top three reasons why? All right. So my favorite, favorite, favorite is the TheraFace Pro. So if somebody like wants a face, a face care device, that's the one that I'm like, if you can get just one, like I have all of them. I've tried all of them. They're not all great. Of course you do. They all have different purposes. Yeah. But the TheraFace Pro has percussive massage. So it's like, mm. a, you know, a Theragun, do you know TheraBody? Like a Theragun. It is like that brand, but it's like a little one for your face. Cute. So you can massage your jaw because I always have like jaw tension. It From also has speaking a of it all. Current, it, yeah, it's got like the microcurrent top on it. It's got red light on it. Like it has like all the things that you can switch out. So it's a good like cool. all in one device. Love it. And I, you know, it's in the in the morning. Like so, I go to the gym and then I shower and like I have like my live streams and my filming all day. So I have my window. I don't start filming, you know, I got to like get cute for the day, but I'll put on mm-hmm. like a podcast. I'll put on a show. Then I do my skincare and it's very much like for me. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do skincare like on videos a little bit, but that's because of me trying to reach my target audience of mm-hmm. like showing women like you can make videos mm-hmm. um, that. So the skincare showing up a little bit in the content, but for the most Smart. part, like that's that's my time. You know, yeah. where I can just chill and I just massage my face. Also, like yeah. gua sha and like putting gloves on and doing mm. like a buccal massage. Have you heard of that? No, walk me. It's like where you like reach in. You like you reach in your mouth yeah. and you're massaging the the whole muscle. So you put like a little oil on, you put some okay. gloves on, and wow. you really are like squeezing the muscle. Okay. It's so good. It's All so right. Good. I'm going to try that. What was it called again? Buccal massage, B U C C A L. Thank you. All right, you guys. I hope you're taking your notes. Where you're hearing it from the pro. All right, very cool. Next segment: Love is our artist. Love. What practices or routines do you have in place to nurture your creativity and spirituality while running your business? Mm. A big thing is to do something outside of your business. Something Heck that yeah. feeds you that is outside of the business and outside of your creative uh, entity, your creative mm. output, right? So mm. like I make videos, I make videos about everything, but once in a while I go do something and I don't film it. I just do it for fun. Like last year I saw Taylor Swift and I saw Beyonce. I did not take a video. Good job. I took a I picture. I love that. Because like. The whole shows are on the internet. Like it, it, yeah. it's out there. So pe- the like, it's not like I need to be reporting, <laughs> you know, like that stuff right. is out there because it, you know, it used to be like, oh, fun. Look at where I'm at. But now it's like, no, like people know this is happening. I don't need yeah. to share that necessarily. At least I took a, a picture, picture for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I like, I have on my little skylight frame. Like I didn't, I didn't, didn't even hit the internet. Like I yeah. just, for me, you know, so like also to feed your artist yourself so like keeping the the picture of myself at 13 nearby is something i tell a lot of people to try to do because i think that our if we if we look at our inner artist as us at 6 8 10 12 13 we were exactly who we are in that window who we are who we were then was like the purest version and then like life comes in and starts to make adjustments right but if we can objectively look back at wherever that time period is, like there, there's something for everybody, right? Like where where this time period is where you are at your pure, purest version of you and you can take care of that person as your artist. So take take them out on an artist date. You know, sometimes when I feel like as an artist, when things are getting crazy and I'm feeling cranky and I'm feeling weird, I was like, oh, that's not me. That's her. Mm. So what what does she want? Oh, let's go get some ice cream. Oh, it's fine. I never let's, thought of that. Let's go do yeah. something. Like I, I separate it from me because it's easy. If it's me, then I am depresso espresso. Then you become a like... caretaker for your. Oh my god, that's genius! Mm-hmm. I, yeah. As you were saying that, I, I recently found this in I don't know memory or or whatever. Um, so here's my first time <gasps> doing my own makeup. <laughs> oh, the baby! Uh-huh. As a ten year old, I with it. a full face. <laughs> yes. I'm going to print that and put that next to my desk as well. So thank you for sharing yeah. that. I love that. I hope you guys do that too. And thank you for sharing uh, the advice on what practices you take. So, all right. Can you share any tips or advice uh, for aspiring 
entrepreneurs like yourself looking to incorporate more creativity and maybe spirituality into their work? Mm, okay, well, from the entrepreneur part, it sucks as the creatives, but you got to get organized. <laughs> the adulting of early. it all. Get organized as early as you can, like from the beginning, while it's a side hustle, start doing the like, take out 30% of the of the gig payment and put that aside for taxes, even if it's your side gig. Just get in the practice yep. of those things, getting organized. Write down your expenses. Just, I'm telling you, just do it early. Mm -hmm. It's better than having to do it later and go backwards. So, yeah. That's and great. that will help your spiritually feel better because then mm -hmm. you're not like, oh my God, this thing is haunting me. Yeah. Um, because it'll just eat away at you. Right. But Absolutely. as far as your, uh, what was the rest of the question? Yes. If you could share any tips or advice for aspiring entrepreneurs looking to incorporate more creativity and spirituality into their work. Yes. So take time to breathe, mm. having mm -hmm. something physical and something creative outside of the income generating work, right? So like whenever I make my quarterly goals, something physical, something creative, and then something income generating. And like there's crossover in them, but like if I can mm -hmm. keep mm -hmm. a version of each thing in its own lane, like mm -hmm. get out and move, get out. Yeah, like, get some vitamin D. My go-to is Taking so expensive, oxygen. but like it makes a difference because mm -hmm. I have to go outside and go be with people and I'm expected mm -hmm. somewhere. You know, like when you you pay for something, then you're like more likely to go because you're like, well, I better make this worth my time. And it yeah. makes a difference. That's it my really husband's philosophy. Absolutely. Like signing up for a class and having a community to uplift you and that energy exchange within whatever class you're taking is very helpful for uh, creative people. Thank you for sharing that. Um, cool. I have many questions. So how do you measure success in both your creative and entrepreneurial pursuits? And do they ever overlap in any way? Mm, how do I measure the success creatively with what I do when I'm helping other people create videos, like a measure of success for me is seeing people actually make the videos because I will put out, I'll put out the, the tutorials. I will answer the questions. I will cheer people on and I will scream from the top of my lungs that you got this, you can do it, but then not everybody will act on it. But then there's folks like yeah. Andrew, like Andrew will do it. Like there is a, very big group that will actually take action. And that mm -hmm. for me is a measure of success uh, because I know it's a result of a lot of things and it's yeah. their hard work, but like that I got to play a part in, mm -hmm. in just nudging this along and seeing, yeah. like, yes, they did. Yeah. That feels I so love good that. to me. That is really good success. Thank you for sharing that. So cool. All right. So in season two, we have a really fun segment. The library is open! Yeah. Because reading is what? Fundamental! There you have it, darling. I meant that I'm one of my favorite parts of it. It is called The Library is Open. It's not for shade, it's for shine. And this is to spotlight our guests and share a book they're currently reading or their favorite book from the past. And what are your top three reasons why, Mary Lou? All right. Well, if you guys haven't read Andrew's book yet, you need to. It's wonderful. Like it is Aww, objectively wonderful. It's a wonderful story. And I enjoy the inspiration. I enjoy the honesty. And I I enjoy the journey. So thank you for sharing thank that you, story babe. with us in it's print. Called, love is art. Art is love, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very good. But recently I have been obsessed with Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. So there's like two books. The third book is coming out in January. And it is a fantasy book, which is not normally the route that I go, but it starts off really great. The female lead is strong and she's not stupid. Like that is something that always bothers me is mm -hmm. that we have our female lead and they're a little oblivious. And like, not to say that people aren't sometimes oblivious, like she's oblivious to some things. It's a fantasy one of her genre. Right. Right. And then her, but her trait is that she is studied and she is intelligent. So she's going to basically like a military school with dragons. And she- Brad. 
like the other option was for her to be a scribe. So she was training to be a scribe, which was like to work in the library and work in the archives and things like that. So she had been training, training for that. So she's very, very book smart. Similar for, to you. you know, and right? also yeah. the military of it all. <laughs> yes. So like because her, her mother is in the military, she had to go the military route. So she's physically weak, but gross, but is smart enough to think of solutions. Plus, it's a little spicy sometimes. Oh, fun. we love that as adults. Mm -hmm. I love fantasy. That was always the first genre that I always fell in love with from such a young age. Ray Bradbury, Martian Chronicles, Fahrenheit 451. And then as I got therapy, all the self-help books, you know, came uh -huh. out. And then, all of them. yes. And thank you for shouting out my book because I feel that kind of is a hybrid of both where yeah, I want to share vulnerabilities and struggles to inspire but also have the fantasy of goals accomplishing and love and the triggers and traumas of it all so very yes. cool fourth wing and, then, and, then and then what one was more the art is... sorry go ahead. oh that so fourth wing is rebecca yaros thank you it's a fantasy series and then any artist you, you got to read the artist way you just need to get a copy and keep that on hand mm -hmm. because that, that will like i have had it for years i've never completed the book but when I need it, I go to it and nice. it serves me very, very well. So, you know, it's like, I guess like some people don't read, haven't read the whole Bible. Like I, I don't, I'm, yeah. I don't read the Bible, but I know some people like you go for passages, you go for mm -hmm. the thing, a little therapy the that you mm -hmm. need and it's mm -hmm. excellent. You should just have one of those on hand always. Good. Thank you. Were you going to share another one or that, that was good, right? No, that was it. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Love this. All right. Okay, so this is going to be a rapid cue wrapping up mindful artists segment. Uh, love this section as well. So I'm going to ask you three questions, Mary Lou, and wherever you are, intuitively answer it. Try not to think about it too hard. Um, question number one, who is your hero and why? Oh, my hero is my dad. Yeah. What's, my dad. What's Papa's who, name? His name is David. Uh, he Shout out to passed David. away when I was 16. Yeah. And he was, uh, the way that he treated me was like I was an equal, like I was smart, like I belonged. So a lot of my confidence comes with how he dealt with his like eldest daughter, who was like, very curious, had lots of big questions, a little bit of an attitude. But he always, yeah. like, if I had a question, he would answer it. Yeah. And he didn't talk to me like oh, you don't, you, you, you're too young to know, or you, you know, like if it was something that was a little bit out of what I should answer, like I should know, he'll ask, he would ask me, he's like, yeah, sure. You want to know? And then I would know, be like, come back to me yeah. a little bit later, but you know, but most yeah. of the time, like he would just tell me. Yeah. So, just that, like an equal. Hero. So cool. Mm -hmm. David, shout out to dad, David. All right. Favorite music album of all time and why? Oh, yeah <laughs> music album of all time i mean all i can think about right now is beyonce just the latest one the latest one Carter. is so good i love so good. i loved renaissance i also have good. been a, a beyonce fan mm -hmm. forever and ever and ever and like i have enjoyed her growth i feel like i always feel like she's like my cousin i feel like she's our cousin because she's like our age right so we're like yeah. oh look at yeah. it yeah she's doing it because you can see in her reflected the the growth uh, and transformations that are happening in us if we are willing to embrace it. So that's your deserted island, which you said Renaissance, Cowboy Carter, which one, if you were in a deserted mm. island, one disc man, one I get CD. One. Get one. You know what? I think I would take Cowboy Carter. It, it's so new, but it does go places and it has a little bit of everything where like Renaissance is just party the whole time. So I, I'll, I'll take Cowboy Carter. Yeah. No, girl, it's it's so good. It's a freaking journey. Mm -hmm. It has a beginning, a middle, an end. There's so many layers to it. It's so complex, and w even within each song, there's so many layers too. It's like it's just uh, it's a lot. It's it's good. It's emotion. It's teary. It's happy. It's strength. It's it's everything. It's it's she gave it to us. I'm yeah. I love her. I'm, I feel the same way. My husband saw her last tour twice. Uh, by himself oh. too like because oh. I, I was not able to go 
Um, so that's it. That's his queen because we everybody knows who's who's mine. And yes, yes. I'm, I'm seeing her one more time uh, this Thursday. Oh, Can't wait. Yes. Um, so yes, good choice. Cowboy Carter, Beyonce. All right, Mary Lou, wrapping up my Florida's rapid cues. Final question: What is your favorite quote of all time? <laughs> mm, a favorite quote mm -hmm. uh, would be, you know, like classic. Do. Or do there's no try. It's like the Yoda quote. It was like, do or do not, there is no try. Because when you're saying you try something, oh, I'm trying to be better. Or are you actually working towards being better? Like try is like oh, weird semantics, mm -hmm. right? Like it's mm -hmm. not really committed, but do or do not. Period. That's it. Yeah. Love it. Dang, that's good. You're it's like you've done this before a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of like you're <laughs> used to being on camera and all the things. Uh, Mary Lou, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. This is your time to plug all the things. Where can we follow you? Uh, what projects do you have upcoming? Anything that you would like to announce? Plug away. Yes. Um, Mary Lou Mandel, all over the internet. As far as I know, I'm the only one. Just make sure you spell it correctly. YouTube is the main place to find me. I'm going live on there every week. The schedule is a little changing right now, but once a week I go live for uh, two hours and it's just questions. It's basically like office hours, chill with me in the studio, something you need to know, come and let me know. Um, but there's a lot of tutorials for how to make videos, but we can talk about anything that you want. I also have some classes on Skillshare if you are wanting to know how to uh, edit videos or you want to know how to make little product videos. I have like quick and easy classes on Skillshare that you can access. If, you, if you've if you never used Skillshare, you get like a month free or a week free. I don't know. Like you can get a trial. You can finish these classes on a trial. And I have very exciting upcoming, I'm going to have an app that's Video Creators. What? Yes. yes. So it's still in the works, but it's coming. Um, that's going to be amazing. a membership app with a community with classes with workshops hot seats just oh, basically yeah. you want to be a video creator you don't have to be like i'm trying to be the top youtuber it's just like you want to make videos whether they're for yourself for your business mm -hmm. for your life you just enjoy this please. here are the fundamentals here's a community to connect with and yeah. let's all help each other out that's so dope yes. i'm so proud yeah. of you do you have a name for this app Vid it's video creator club like i have the url video creator dot club so all right yes. you guys heard it first because this i this is my first time hearing about this too i'm definitely yes. going to join that video mm -hmm. creator club so cool thank you so much um you guys this is another episode of my artist podcast we have mary lou mandel in the house go follow her do all the things and that song you're about to hear is called mi corazon you can download mi corazon wherever you listen to your favorite music don't forget to rate us, review us, give us those stars, give us those thumbs up. That way others like yourselves are more, most likely to see it in their algor algorithms. I can't speak right now. And till the next time, you guys, make an impact in somebody's life. Much love and light to you all. Thank you, Mary Lou. Bye, everybody.